I've just had the hardest weekend I've ever had. The hardest weekend anybody has ever had, really. Um, I want to tell you a story about what happened. Um, but first, sup fools, how's it going? And welcome to another video. And today, I'm going to tell you this story, how we managed to make a short film in 48 hours. Let's begin. I decided to actually do this outside because I spent way too much time on set and in the editing room in the office because, like I said, we tried to make a short film in 48 hours. Why? Um, I got invited to a group to, to make this, uh, there's this 48 hour film festival. So people, um, lots of groups in LA, uh, they come together and try to make a short film in 48 hours. So everybody, you know, groups up. We had a team of, I don't know, 10 people in the beginning or so. And then, you know, I met five of them in like a pre-meeting. So I met the director, met the assistant director, met the writer and an actress. And yes, that's where the trouble started. I don't know if you guys realize, but I'm actually a pretty funny person. Sometimes I seem a little serious in my videos, but actually I'm hilarious for, for real. So I was just being myself and, you know, joking around, um, goofing around with everybody and try to have a good time because nobody in this group knew me. Yeah, I was basically the stranger in the group. So I basically tried to hit him with 120% fit flock. And most of the people appreciated that. They liked me, I think. but. One person did not so much. And I felt it, you know, I was not really politically correct of the things I was saying. To be more exact, this one dude, the assistant director, uh, he looked pretty badass. He was wearing a very cool outfit. And I told him, man, bro, you look badass. No homo. And at this point, I realized the actress, she didn't find me that funny, you know? and. That was interesting, but I was like, okay, whatever. I'm just gonna finish the meeting. I'm gonna go home. Then I'm just gonna send her an Instagram message, which I did. I told her, man, uh, I know I can come up like a douchebag, but you know, I just try to be entertaining. And if I offended you in any way, I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. So we had a little back and forth and eventually it was like, all right, I apologize. Everything should be fine, right? wrong. On the next meeting, a few days later, um, the director asked me to come. It was like in a bar and they, uh, him and the assistant director, they wanted to talk to me because some people got offended by my jokes. And I obviously knew it was just what, this one person because at this meeting there were only five of us. So it was the director, the assistant director, the writer, an actress and me. But they said, people plural, got offended by my jokes. And they asked me to please not do that anymore. But I cut them off right away and I told them, hey, I know what you're talking about. You're talking about this person. And I apologized to her right away. Shouldn't be a big deal. But you know, she didn't tell them that I apologized. She just went behind my back to complain about me because she didn't have the guts to communicate that properly. So yeah, that was the first issue. But I was like, okay, whatever. I'm just gonna censor myself around her and I'm gonna talk to the writer dude and ask if he had an issue with me. Next meeting, fast forward, I asked him, he said no. He had no issues with me, so it was just this one girl. So I did talk to her a little on the meeting because this meeting actually, the subject came out, uh, what this movie was supposed to be about, this short film we were supposed to make. And so we just talked a little, but not a big deal. Eventually, everybody left because the writer, director, assistant director, maybe DP, they sit together and talked about the actual idea of what we want to shoot. And an issue with that was also that too many people were in the room, like 10, 12 people were in the room and talked about ideas and what to do and it didn't go anywhere. What should have happened is like everybody tells their idea and then everybody just leaves and the director and assistant director and writer can actually work on it. Because again, 
we only had 48 hours time. So every conversation we had was a big, big waste because we had to come up with one concept, one short film, which not everybody had to be happy with, but you know, it had to be a good idea. So we should have left then. But no, this meeting was way too long because we were supposed to write the idea till the morning, 6 a.m. And 6 a.m. was call time to get to set. But just at 6 a.m. they came up with the idea, so they still had to write the script until 6 p.m. So we just basically wasted 12 hours. Then eventually it was time to shoot. And funny enough, in the group text, they said that this one actress which had a problem with me, which made this whole scene decided she doesn't want to be part of the project anymore because, and this is not official information, this is just what I read between the lines, is because she didn't have enough lines in the short. So she decided she doesn't want to be part of it. But good for me because I didn't want to work with her anyway, so I was lucky, but then it was time to shoot. So I was in charge of editing. I was not in charge of shooting, not in charge of directing or writing. So not the things I'm actually good at, I was supposed to do. I was supposed to be just the editor. So I was supposed to bring my whole computer and I don't have a laptop or anything. I have a whole computer with monitors on all these things. So I brought this everything on set. The idea was while they're shooting, like every two hours, I was supposed to get the footage on the computer so I could start editing to save time. Great concept. Didn't work out because the actual DP who was supposed to shoot this thing on like big boy cameras, like a red something, like a huge camera, um, he had a broken rib and he was not able to shoot anymore after I would say like two hours into the shoot. It was like a 10 hour shoot total. So after two hours, he couldn't shoot anymore. And then the mood dropped. Everybody thought, okay, it's over. The, DP can't work anymore and I didn't realize that was happening. I was outside taking a nap. So I came back inside and I saw the director putting on the easy rig, you know, the vest with this, you know, scorpion arm so you can shoot handheld. And I was like, what the fuck is going on? So then they explained to me, cinematographer can't shoot anymore. He had to go home uh, and I could see on the face of the director, he he was overwhelmed, he couldn't do it anymore. So it seemed at this point that we're just gonna wrap up. We're not gonna finish this short film, we're just gonna quit. But then, hey, 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 there is another cinematographer on set who can handle the equipment. And I was like, hey, bro, let me shoot it. Let me finish this film, I can do this, you know? And he was like, ah, oh, I don't know, mm hmm, hmm, What happened was, me and the assistant director, we took over the set. The director actually left home. Can you believe it? The director, we were all there for him. He left, he went home to take a nap, jerk off. I don't know what he was doing, but he left us. And I've never seen anything like this happening. And that just, it's just mind blowing to me because that just shows me that some people are just not made for this. They're not made to handle the pressure of a set. And even, especially because the stakes were so low. It's just a short film. Nobody cares if it's good or bad. You know, it's a short film we're supposed to shoot within 48 hours. Nobody gives a fuck if it's good or bad. If it's good, awesome. We're gonna win some awards. If it's bad, it's gonna be like, fuck it. It's, we only had 48 hours time. Of course, it's gonna be bad. Either way, director couldn't handle the pressure, left, went home. And assistant director and I, we fucking crushed it. We, we took over, we shot this entire short from bam, bam, bam. We fucking crushed it, it's so good. Like, and I didn't know him before. It was the first time we we're shooting, working together. And we were a great team. I, I love it when that happens. When two people just have this connection and they, they know what the other person is thinking and we just can't work together without communicating and mm, it was it was magical it it was magical but yeah that was basically the story how i shot this entire short film and in the morning we we got done at like 6 a.m or so then we had to go everybody went home i slept for three hours who we'll transferred the footage for the the past three hours or so so I went to downtown, pick up the footage and went home. I started editing at like 11 a.m. So I had 
like six hours time to edit an entire short film which is shorter than the actual shoot was and everybody knows shooting something always is faster than editing something but I had like half the time to edit what we shot so I couldn't even review the entire footage but I really 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 did my best on three four hours of sleep and it was very exhausting like I said hardest weekend in a very long time and this entire experience made me just learn something very very valuable what I want to share with you guys Filmmaking is not for everyone. You need a very, very thick skin to make it in this industry. Not just because it's like so hard to make money with it in this industry, also because when you are actual on set or you actually do your work, nothing goes, goes flawless. There's always compromises you have to make. People don't always share your opinions. It's an art form, so you have to deal with sensitive people. It's just physically and mentally very, very exhausting. And I've done jobs before filmmaking and, you know, they can be physically exhausting too, but not like that. Like SADP, carrying a camera around. That's why really big props to the actual DP who came to set with a broken rib and start and, and try to make a film happen even though he was so handicapped he tried and even after he had to leave because the pain was too bad he left his equipment i don't know how much but my guess is around a hundred thousand dollars worth of equipment he left it with strangers in a stranger's hands because i didn't know him personally so big props to him because he tried really hard but for the director who left the um the actress who first complained like a little bitch and then quit because she didn't get enough lines those people will never make it in this industry and if you are someone who is pursuing filmmaking or acting or something like that as a career it's not impossible for you what i'm saying is get a very thick skin so you can really make it through any struggles. And the way I, um, you know, dealt with all of that, all the stress and pressure and responsibility, some might say I'm a hero and I accepted responsibility. But no, seriously though, um, it was a crazy experience. I would not do it again if I could go back. And will I do it again in the future? For sure, because you just learn so much about yourself, about your personal boundaries, about how hard you can push yourself, how hard you can push your personal limits. So it's a growth experience and I loved it while I hated it. But in the end, we made a decent short film, not thanks to the director. Well, I gotta say, eventually he came back after a few hours, apologized and whatever, but that's worth nothing to me. But that's it for this video. What do you think? Am I too harsh with those people? Or um, do they deserve this hate talk? Because, yeah, I think I really had to save multiple people's asses to make this short film happen. So, what do you think? Was I too harsh? Or not harsh enough let me know in the comments below thank you so much for watching if you have any questions about my beautiful little story please let me know in the comments below make sure to subscribe like the video check out my patreon if you haven't already and see you in the next video later how do you like my new hair <laughs>